Shane Van Gisbergen, the three-time supercars champ, is making a big move to NASCAR in 2024. It all started when he shocked everyone by winning his very first NASCAR Cup race at the Chicago Street Course in July. No one had done that in six years. Then, he kept the good times rolling with a top 10 finish at the Indianapolis RC. That's something no one had done since Terry Labonte back in 1978. He even tried his hand in the truck series last month, finishing 19th with Nice Motorsports. But the real excitement is about to come in 2024. Welcome to Up Close Racing. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell icon for more NASCAR content. Justin Marks, the owner of Trackhouse, has now made it official. They have signed Shane Van Gisbergen, but there is a catch, Shane won't be jumping straight into full-time NASCAR action. Instead, Trackhouse has set him up with what you could call a speedy learning program. In the upcoming season, he will be hopping onto various types of stock cars to get the hang of oval racing, even though he's 34 years old. Although it seemed like a sure thing that Shane would come to the US and race in NASCAR after his big win, Trackhouse has decided to take it step by step. They've given him a deal that's more about learning and growing. So, Shane will be racing in a mix of races in NASCAR's top three national series and even some local races with late model cars. We don't have the full schedule yet, but Marx has revealed that it will be tailor-made to provide Shane with a diverse range of NASCAR racing experiences. In his own words, this is going to be a tremendous challenge for Shane, but he is a tremendous driver as we have all seen. Next year, we'll be about getting him acclimated to oval track racing, super speedways, 1.5 mile tracks, and everything he has never experienced in his career. It's going to be a learning process, but we think Shane will perform quite well. So clearly, the goal is to help Shane get comfortable with all kinds of racing tracks. From ovals to super speedways and 1.5 mile circuits, things he hasn't tackled in his career. This whole official program kicks off next season, but Shane has already started his stock car journey. He had his first go at oval racing in the truck series in August, where he finished 19th at Indianapolis Raceway Park. He also raced in the Cup Series on the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and pulled off a 10th place finish. So far, he's doing pretty darn well, with an average finish of 5.5 in his first two Cup Series races. Now, obviously, Shane is stoked about the whole deal too, and here's what he said. This announcement means so many things to me. I'm proud of what I've achieved here in Australia, but I'm excited by this new chapter in my career and the opportunities that it brings. Now, he made quite a splash when he first joined Team Project 91. This program is all about giving international racing stars a shot at NASCAR with competitive cars, a real chance to win races. It was intriguing when Kimi Raikkonen joined the team last season, but Gisbergen's win has taken the program from being just a cool concept to something that's really making a real impact in NASCAR practically overnight. Now, Trackhouse has found a special way to nurture its own rising star. In the Australian Supercars Championship, Gisbergen is doing pretty well. He is currently in second place with four rounds left, including the famous Bathurst 1000 race. However, it hasn't been all smooth sailing. He got disqualified from the first race of the season and has been working hard to climb back up the rankings. However, the good news is that Shane is joining a growing group of talented motorsport drivers from New Zealand who are making their mark on the global racing stage. Liam Lawson recently made his debut in Formula 1, while Scott Dixon, a six-time IndyCar champion from Auckland, is the seasoned veteran among this trio of Kiwi drivers in IndyCar. Dixon had a fantastic season, winning three out of the last four races in the IndyCar series. His teammate at Chip Ganassi Racing, Marcus Armstrong, earned recognition as the top rookie in IndyCar, despite missing out on five oval races. Scott McLaughlin also had a noteworthy performance, finishing third in the IndyCar standings. This came in his third season in the series after transitioning from winning three V8 Supercars titles. McLaughlin's move to IndyCar opened the door for Shane to establish himself as a force to be reckoned with in the series. Trackhouse Racing is currently running two full-time cup cars with Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, and they don't have any teams competing in the lower NASCAR divisions. However, before Shane makes his move to the United States, he still has some unfinished business in the Supercars Championship. He is currently trailing championship leader Brody Kostexi by 137 points. And with the endurance rounds approaching, starting with the sand down 500 this weekend, there is still a title fight to be settled. Bob Pockrass also has provided some interesting insights about Shane's NASCAR journey. 
He confirmed that SVG will be participating in select races in NASCAR's Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Craftsman Truck Series. However, it appears that Trackhouse won't be fielding teams for these lower series. Instead, they'll partner with existing teams in those series. As for Shane's car number, nothing is confirmed yet. It's uncertain whether he'll continue with the Project 91 car or use a different number. Sponsorship details are also to be determined, but there's speculation about the possibility of Red Bull returning as a sponsor. However, the question remains, will Shane be able to conquer NASCAR? If we dial back to the late 2000s, there was an other racer, Marcus Ambrose, who took a similar leap into NASCAR and did pretty well in the Cup Series from 2008 to 2014. He scored two wins at Watkins Glen in 2011 and 2012, and five more in what's now called the Xfinity Series. Ambrose was known for his skills on road tracks and even did okay on oval tracks, even though he never won on one. So, it's not crazy to think that SVG could follow a similar path. Now, SVG is going to need some time to figure out how to race on those oval-shaped tracks, as we saw in his Truck Series debut. That's going to be his main focus in 2024. But if there's one thing we know about SVG, it's that he's a fast learner. So, don't be shocked if he goes full-time in the Cup Series by 2025. Plus, there are more road courses on the schedule, and the playoff format is like win and you're in. So he might serve prizes with some strong performances. He might be starting a bit late in NASCAR, but he's already proven himself as a winner. All in all, the transition from racing in Australia and New Zealand to the highly competitive world of NASCAR is no small feat. SVG's impressive road course performance suggests he's a capable driver. But oval racing presents a unique challenge, and this developmental program will allow him to gain experience on a variety of track types. We'll be sure to keep an eye on him as he takes on this new challenge. Oh, and let's cross our fingers that NASCAR's TV announcers will be able to learn how to pronounce his name. How do you see him performing in his debut season in 2024? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch the next one that will pop up on your screen and subscribe to our channel to stay in the loop with all things NASCAR.